Good morning. So today, basics on functions in Go. So we're gonna base um, our examples on um, the video from the structs. So as a refresher, you can have a look to that video and then uh, perhaps come back to that functions uh, video. So uh, previously we had a struct uh, called car and uh, with three properties and one of the property was uh, also a struct called brand. Um, so let's start with um, a function in the car package so um, simply um, a package method so we can say display name that's the name of the method and then um, car uh, as type car that you can see is just that um, the first argument of the function. Um, this method is not rendering anything, it's just logging something. So from the car that we are passing as a first argument, we can just uh, say car.brand.name. So then if in the main function we invoke um, that uh, display brand name function, passing a car that we previously built, and we can run that. So BMW, you can see on the second log line that um, it has just print the uh, brand name. All right, so um, we can, um, I can now show you how to um, declare the return type. So now our display brand name function will return a string so that you can see uh, on um, the right hand side of the function. So um, let's just um, uh, uh, render a formatted string like car brand colon and then the name uh, of the brand. So for that, we're going to use the FMT package with the sprintf function, basically. So um, we can invoke. So now line 16 on the main is a string. So we can uh, store that string into a variable call a uh, displayable brand for example and then we can just log that uh, displayable brand so if we run that you can see that uh, our uh, formatted string is uh, spat back so car brand colon bmw all right so one argument and one um, um, return uh, type so um, what we can do now is um, to um, have multiple arguments so then after car car you do a colon and then f for instance we can pass a uh, year now as an int uh, and we can pass uh, our current year which is 2020 and for example we can um, put in parentheses the um, age of the car so we will do year now minus um, the um, the year of the car, which is the third property, um, the second property of the car struct. Right. So 1987. Uh, so the car is 33 years old. So that's two arguments. So the display brand name function is a package methods which in other languages can be treated as um, class method. So now here you can see that just before the name of the function, I change um, with um, parentheses car car. So in Go, it's called a function receiver. And you can see uh, as uh, you can treat it as um, instance method. So uh, now to invoke display brand name, uh, I need a car and you can see I'm just going to rename C by my car and you can see that display brand name is callable by just doing my car dot and then display brand name and I remove the first argument car because now you can directly use your receiver struct inside the body of your function on line 19 and you can see that it's still working when we are logging um, now a very classic go pattern so uh, we saw multiple arguments input arguments but how about uh, multiple output uh, variables so you can see that you have to provide parentheses 
so a classic pattern is um, sending the correct value uh, as first output on the right on the left sorry and then an error on the right so here the display run name will return um, a tuple string or error you can have multiple um, uh, output uh, output variables if you want you just uh, do comma after your error and add anything you want so here we just add a, a little um, logic so if the year is greater than 2030 we will return an empty string and an error otherwise uh, we just um, send back our uh, previous um, formatted string and no error so no error can be um, uh, can be passed as nil for instance so then uh, you can see uh, in the main f in the main program the way to invoke that one is um, uh, you have to assign two variable otherwise your compiler will complain so first is the um, display burn burn string and the second one is the error and then uh, on line 17 to 19 you can see a very classic go pattern if the error is not nil we're gonna um, log and panic so if we run that again nothing has changed we're still uh, receiving our formatted string but if we do um, if we put 2050 for instance you can see that it has terminated with a non-zero code and throw back the error so that was the very very basic on the function so uh, we saw how to um, send multiple arguments how to throw back multiple uh, variables how to build a receiver function um, there's many more obviously so uh, I'm thinking about variadic functions that we didn't see and uh, we didn't see um, what's the difference between a pointer receiver and a strike receiver but um, let's build it step by step so um, if you enjoyed the video um, like it and um, if you have any questions uh, leave that in the comments and thanks for watching and happy coding